regular board meeting of the Fitzen Community High School District 100 boards of order. May I have a roll call? Figueroa? Here. Goodridge? Yeah. Hade? Kovac? Lewis? Here. Bredzinski? Here. Rago? Here. We have a quorum. Please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. James, please read our Fenton mission, beliefs, advice, and weight statements. Yes. Our Fenton mission statement is to cultivate successful, passionate, empowers learners through rigor, relevance, and relationships. Belief statements. Successful, passionate, empowered learners thrive when we provide a safe, caring, and welcoming environment. Diversity, equity, and inclusion unify our community. School and home collaborate as one. We champion innovative teaching and engage learning with the state-of-the-art facilities. We infuse social-emotional learning into academics and culture. We prepare students to fulfill their civic responsibility. We immerse students in authentic life experiences. The Bison Way, students and adults at Fenton High School create a safe, caring, empathetic environment where we believe in each other, respect diversity, communicate openly, grow together, and hold each other to high expectations to become the leaders and innovators of the future. Karen, do we have any comments? No, we do not. Next item is recognition, Sam. Okay. Thank you and good evening. Tonight we want to honor our very own girls cross country all state runner, Northwestern Medicine Discovery Program, and of course, happy board members day. So let's start with our cross country Runner, Jocelyn Wade, if you please come forward. Woo. Jocelyn, I thought you were gonna run up here, and I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, okay, congratulations. We're here to honor you tonight as one of the top runners in our area and the state. She took second place at regionals, advanced through our sectionals, and earned a spot in the state tournament, as you can see the picture of us celebrating her, uh, her advances. During the November 4th state finals in Peoria, she took 16th place. Just for some context, if you're in the top 25, you're considered an all-state runner. And we did some digging. We think you're the first female runner that's ever been considered an all-state runner in our school history. <laughs> And the best part, what year are you? Sophomore. Right. Two more years. Here we go. <laughs> so this is just one of many uh, that we're anticipating in the future. But we just uh, want to appreciate all your efforts, the hard work you put in to get yourself to this point and look forward to your future. Um, unfortunately, Coach Kekstad has been ill and hasn't uh, been at school, but I believe we have uh, Coach Garcia here. Great, come on up, Coach Garcia, round of applause. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Giselle. I'm the assistant coach for the girls cross country team here. Um, so Coach K was sick, but I get the pleasure to say a couple of kind words about our girl Jocelyn. Um, it truly was an honor to coach Jocelyn this past season. Um, she just did so incredibly well. She worked hard all throughout the summer, all throughout the season. You know, all everything she did was in an effort for this incredible achievement she made. You know, all state her first time in school history. She, aside from being an incredible runner, she is also a superb teammate to all the girls on the team. All every single girl on the team, coaches included, we truly find her an inspiration. So we are truly so lucky to have her as a part of the program, and we're so excited for her future achievements to come. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> can I lower this? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, I just wanted to thank all my coaches, all my teammates, 
my family members and everyone who um, believed in me and um, stood by me as I ran this cross country season. It was an amazing season and um, uh, just thank you very much. Okay, if you don't mind just coming forward here, we're gonna take a picture. And if there's anyone else who would like to take a picture, come on over. Next, we have our Northwestern Discovery Program. Ladies, if you please come forward. Next, next slide, please. Okay, we'd like to honor he here tonight uh, Paulina Kujewski, Giselle Garcia, Adamari Gomez, Layla Ortiz, Natalie Ramirez, and Mariam Rihani. And we also have uh, Angie Nelson here today and Kristen Begalki, the teachers in our education program to help share some words here in a minute. But as a brief intro, we want to showcase these students who were accepted in the Northwestern Medicine Discovery Program. This is a competitive application-based program where students are accepted and participate in a year-long discovery of various careers within healthcare. Once a month on Saturday, students will visit different medical settings throughout Illinois and have hands-on experiences in areas like oncology, proton therapy, wellness, rehabilitation, nursing, and other areas. For a little more information, we have our teachers come forward and share some, some more thoughts. Good evening. Uh, Kristen Galke and I are the ones that are teaching our new class this sem uh, semester or year, Introduction to Healthcare Occupations. And in that class, we get to explore different healthcare um, related careers. Mrs. Papaniglo was fortunate enough to make the connection with us with Northwestern Medicine. And they came in in September, and it's pretty impressive because we had a three day turnaround for them to apply for this discovery program. These ladies all had to have a 3.0 GPA. They had to get a letter of recommendation for, uh, from a teacher and they had to fill out two essay questions. So we are very excited for this opportunity for these um, young ladies. And we know that they are going to represent Fenton well. Congratulations. Would any of you like to say a few words? Yeah, come on. <laughs> All right. Um, I first, I want to say thank you to my parents because they have been my number one supporters. Um, they have always told me that I could reach for the stars, and I've held on, on to that saying my whole life. Next, I want to thank Mr. Bader, not just for writing my recommendation letter, but for always being a helping hand, um, whether it's for helping me school-wise or just listening, listening to me. Lastly, I want to thank God for allowing this opportunity to happen for listening to my worries and my excitement. Thank you. Um, the two most influential people that infected my decision, well, 
not only writing my application but also accepting was my parents and they um they really supported me while I was like writing my application and even when I got my my acceptance um my most I feel my most supportive teacher was Mr. Laudermith not only because he wrote my application or my recommendation but also because he helped me along the way and he motivated me and he really helped my love for science grow. Thank you for your time. Hi everyone, my name is Miriam Rahani and I'm very honored to be here. I thank you for your recognition. Um, I greatly appreciate Fenton's support here today and I'd like to thank my parents for always supporting me and um, letting me know that they, I can do anything that um, I set my mind to. Um, I also wanted to give a special thank you to Miss Nelson. <laughs> she's like our school mom and she's always advocating for everything that we want to set our minds to. So thank you to her. Um, again, I just want to say I'm very grateful for the Discovery Program and the opportunity. I can't wait to see where it takes me. Thank you. Um, hello. Uh, first, I'd like to thank my family for all their support and encouragement, as well as to Mrs. Toe, my counselor, for assisting me with my essay, and Ms. Bible for being very <laughs> quick and writing my letter of rec. Um, on behalf of all of us ladies, we would like to thank and recognize Mrs. Nelson, Mrs. Bogolki, and Mrs. Papaniccolo for not only letting us know about the Discovery Program, but um, always looking for ways they can better the health occupations class and guide us as we discover our future health, uh, careers in healthcare. So thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Well, why don't we come up here since we have such a large crowd? And again, parents, if you want to be in the picture or take a picture, come on forward. Next item. No, one more recognition. One more? Yeah. Once again, thank you. Uh, up next is um, a recognitions to our board members. First of all, happy board members day. <laughs> From all of us, we want to take a moment and wish our board of education a happy board members day. We honor all of you for donating your time and commitment towards making Fenton School 
a welcoming, safe place for our students to achieve their dreams. You all wear many different hats. They are educational leaders, policy makers, contract negotiators, governance, committee chairs for our school, and board members of other organizations outside of Fenton, like NEDSEC and the Bensonville Foundation. But you are also a homeowner, a business owner, a taxpayer, a neighbor, a friend, a community member, and Bison's nation's biggest fan. Your work and influence include the following Fenton initiatives, equity, response to the pandemic, facility construction and renovation, safety and wellness, balanced budget and fiscal responsi uh, responsibility, governance and policy, and so many other things. We want you to know that your efforts are absolutely appreciated and you are making a big difference in the lives of our ch children. Thank you, Fenton Board of Education, one more time. Another round of applause, please. Our next item is informational items. James. Thank you. Uh, we got a, quite a few items here. Uh, first one is our 2023 Fenton, Illinois State Report Card. Uh, just please note quickly just a couple of pre-headers here. Number one, there is no ISBE data uh, report during the pandemic school year, which is 2019 uh, through 2020. Um, so you will see that um, on the display. Um, also note the pandemic and post-pandemic uh, deeply affected our attendance, uh, our learning, um, our SEL and mental health services. Um, also, the demographics during this time period has also uh, shifted in some ways. Our EL numbers have grown. Our students need more services as well. Um, and lastly, include data from our, we also included on this report, data from our center schools. So first up here, Sam and Kate will assist me and they'll jump in as needed. Um, to as I go over the state record, report card. All of this is from our state report card and through ISBE. Um, there are 24 slides, so feel free to ask questions as we move forward. We'll try to go through this as efficiently as possible. Mind you, real quick, um, again, we are a commendable schools, and the way they calculate the number is through indexes, not percentages, okay? Does that mean only Half the kids that enter as freshmen graduate. Well, where is that at? It says graduation rate. Or am I reading it? No, this is an this is an index score, so index it's index not score. right. Oh, don't read that yeah. literally. Yeah. Right, it's just a number to compare, like Remember. zero to one hundred, basically. Okay. Oh, it's yeah. blended with the rest of that stuff. Correct. Right. So he, number, here's one way to look at it, okay, as Sam was fine. indicating earlier. Like you could get. For graduation rate, right? Yeah. The index is 50 points, for example, or that's 50%. The way, that's the way. We we earn 43%. Right. Okay, so it's not 43% of. We'll go through this, and you'll we'll get to that number. Read. Okay, thank you. That's much better. So commendable. <laughs> uh, let me go through this. Commendable. Overall, uh, the summative designation, we call it a grade, is commendable. Uh, overall performance to be commendable is uh, you're not in the top 10%, so you're somewhere in between, uh, um, below that. Um, there are also no targeted students groups performing at or below the all students group of the lowest performing 5%. So if we score below, if we were within zero and 5%, we will not be commendable, okay? Um, uh, and also to be commendable, your graduation rate must be higher than 67. We know ours is approximately 87, 88. Um, who are our targeted um, population? Um, and targeted population is any population um, student population that's over 10%, that's our low income, our Caucasian students, our Latino students, English learners, students with disability, former English uh, uh, ELLs. Sam, did I miss anything you wanna add there? No. Okay, we keep going. Um, also with commendable performance data is collected via state reporting, that's through all through ISBE. Uh, the metrics is from zero to 100. Each indicator is weighted according to calculation. Each school's all student scores is ranked and determined with a designation. So once again, this is how they weight it. Okay, so that's their metrics. Here's a better number here, and I'm gonna let Sam jump in here to give him a voice here to go over this scores. 
There's eight indicators uh, there. Sam, do you want to cover the rest? Right, so like we said earlier, this is what we call an index score. So don't think it's necessarily uh, percentages everywhere. Uh, so it just gives you an idea overall. Um, and that you could see here they're just, they're equally weighted. We, we looked earlier that like, for example, graduation rate is 50% of the overall score. The, uh, the other rates, ELA proficiency, math profici proficiency is a smaller uh, percentage of this overall commendable uh, rating. So I think, well, let's go to the next slide and I think that'll provide a little more. Sure. So, e so each subcategory is broken down. Um, the state basically has said, okay, yeah, let's start there. The overall index shows right where we're at. So exemplary, you could see for the top 10% of schools, in the state, so we're, we're not really quite there, but we're solidly in that range uh, with the index score of 67. The targeted range is kind of way down on that other end, um, so we're, that, right, exactly right where James is, is pointing to, so we're kind of solid, tending actually closer to exemplary than we would be to to target it. This is overall. Now the nice thing about what the state has said is we want to look at all different subgroups because schools can be great, but you're only as good as all your different subgroups. So we wholeheartedly embrace that. So what we wanted to do tonight is show you where we're at in our in our subgroups. Our, our first one here is a low income. Go ahead, Sam. Yep, so low income, you can see we're at 65. Again, a nice range there uh, compared to where you see throughout the state. To the right would be above us, to the left would be below us. For white students, you could see again, we're trending toward the, the right side. And our Hispanic students, even we have approximately, I think it's like 65% Hispanic. So this is our biggest group, and we are at the 62 area. So again, trending uh, toward the exemplary. This is a, an area that we want to focus on. Uh, our EL learners, of course, as you know, the population's growing. In fact, we're gonna take a closer look at that on exactly uh, what our center schools are, are at because that's probably where we're gonna be uh, very quickly. Uh, but of course, we have a lot of newcomers. We have students that um, you know come to us and we look for them to grow. But clearly, you could see we're kind of trending uh, toward the left side not that we're uh, targeted or anything like that, but this is probably the, the, the subgroup that we're taking the closest look at on what we can do with our EL programming moving forward. Students with disabilities, you can see at 44, so that's close to the middle. This one um, is former ELs, and so you can see that they're scoring at a high rate compared to the rest of the state. This could be a variety, it could be a, a, a Polish student, it could be any sort of student that's exited out at some point. This one right here, I'll take this over here. This is just our metrics for our teachers. Part of the report here is also to tell us about our, our, our teachers here. I can't quite see it, let me use my laptop here. Um, as you could tell, the uh, not this enrollment, uh, the student ratio, uh, we're below the state average there. We're at 16 to 1. State average is 18 to 1. We have a very strong, uh, robust uh, uh, teacher retention. Um, our teachers are also getting um, their professional development with their masters. And um, we're looking for ways to also uh, improve uh, attendance. Can you go back one? Sure. Go back. This one? Yeah. I'm just Sure. So teacher retention mm -hmm. is, so the state average is 93 and we're 93.6? Right, state average is 90, yep. We're at close to 94. 
and that's been consistent the last five years. That purple line there I talked about during the school year 2019-2020 is we did not put a, a data because of the pandemic. They did not collect, collect data. Next up here is student demographics. Um, just quickly here, let me just get my file there. Enrollment. Um, our enrollment, our, our special ed students are with IEPs consistently hover over 12 to 13 percent of our population. This next column uh, row here are English learners. You can see the growth from five years ago, six years ago it was at 10 percent. We are at 22 percent. We expect those numbers to continue to moving forward. Our low income numbers uh, there as well at 56. We really believe that should be higher. We're encouraging our parents. Uh, to c complete the free and reduced lunch form, and that's how we calculate those numbers in our homelessness. Sam, you want to take this one? Yeah. So this is a, a nice little uh, graph. It also shows a trend line. Now let me explain. You have to look at the trend line from right to left. It's a little counterintuitive. Normally you think a trend going left to right. So if you could keep that in mind if, if you're looking at, at that. So right now, the, the EL exit rate, um, you could see is, is low, kind of below the state average. And that's, like I said, that's an area that we're uh, looking for growth in moving forward. Um, the state average is also going down also. ELA proficiency, we feel good about this in that uh, our score actually went up from 21-22. It's still down from pre-pandemic, but we all know the effect the pandemic had, and it hit us pretty hard there. Uh, and especially 21-22 is when we uh, felt felt that. So we're on our way back up, which which we're happy about. And we can also please to highlight that we're also on our way back up in math proficiency even though the state average, we're not quite to the state average, but um, you could see the state average went down in math uh, year over year. And then science proficiency, actually, um, we did quite well in. You could see at the uh, uh, 52%, which is actually just above the state average. One explanation for that is uh, the science proficiency is in Spanish. So if you think about our EL learners could probably do better on that than they do on the SAT. Um, again, an interesting trend line here for grade nine on track. Uh, it actually looks similar to state average, although we took a little bit of a dip last year. With the interventions that we've put in, particularly in math, um, with academic lit, we think that that is going to go back up. That's what we're predicting, that that's just a, a temporary um, it down a little bit from where we were the year before. You could see 2021, we were down even further. Then we had the four-year graduation rate. This is another uh, area of growth for us. We don't like that we're below 90% where we have been at historically, but a way to look at this is this particular group, 22, 23, as freshmen. If you look at the COVID years, that's, that was in the spring when the schools closed down. Then sophomore year, we pretty much were remote or a little bit of hybrid. And then their junior years were uh, masked and um, senior, and the, you know, and then senior year was when uh, was last year. So it kind of had a lot to overcome, and in some cases, kids were behind. The good news here, though, is that the five-year graduation rate is actually 93%. So you know kind of the way society is now. Maybe for a few kids, it took a year longer, but at least they persevered and, and were able to uh, graduate. And then you can also look at the six-year graduation rate. Attendance is, is another area we continue to strive to improve. A small increase last year uh, over 21, 22, um, but again, down from post pandemic uh, percentages. This is kind of a countywide issue. 
talking to other principals. It's a challenge right now uh, getting kids here consistently. Fortunately, we anticipated that this year with many of our attendance interventions, making sure students are held accountable going to class every day when they're here. And also, we're having more and more parent meetings where we're bringing them in, trying to problem solve what the issues might be, why the student may not be in school uh, consistently. So, and we're also doing more home visits. We find that to be an effective way to try to connect with families. It's a myriad of reasons why a student, as you move on to the next category, chronic absenteeism, again, that's higher than the state average, and that's something that we, we certainly need to work on. Um, that metric is explained there if it's greater than 10% of school days. So if you figure 100, 100 a real simple math, 180 days, um, that's 18 days or more. This is excused or unexcused. Uh, not to make excuses, uh, no pun intended, a little bit of humor in, in, in this presentation, but the, um, it, it can be someone with a medical issue. So if someone's out for 20 days due to medical issue, they're considered chronic absentee. So this doesn't account for COVID and crime? And well, and that's a good, it's a good point. So back in the COVID years, if you're out 10 days, let's say, because you had COVID, I mean, you're getting real close to being a chronic absentee, right? I mean, you could be a high-performing student but had COVID. Right, mm -hmm. a couple times or, yeah, exactly. So, but, but, but you know, obviously that's, that's pretty high. We want our kids to be here, but that's part of the story with, with that category. The other category is chronic truancy. So what that means is you've missed more than 5% of the school days within the school year. So Bruce, help me with the math, 180 days, that's nine days, right? Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> so with those kids, the the problem here is they we may not know why they weren't here, even though we try to reach out. So again, that's a pretty high category. But typically, these are families that one of two things is happening: either the student is not coming to school consistently, and the parents don't know what to do, or perhaps could be a newcomer and doesn't. And, and maybe education may not be the priority. It may be employment or watching siblings or things like that. So Could, again, yeah, we got to dive in a little bit more on, on why some kids are in this category and not really communicating particularly well with the schools. Tell me out, what's the difference, absent and true? Yeah, chronic truancy, That this category of the state, basically means we don't necessarily have a reason. Because sometimes a parent will call in and say, Stevie's not feeling well or, or that. So, so that goes down as at least a reason. This is, you know, we get the uh, attendance information goes out and we don't get any, any response on that particular absence. So we code it a certain way, basically. Uh, mobility rate. You could see we're right about the state average. Those are students coming in and out. We ha actually had more freshmen come in this year for some reason than transferred out, uh, but sometimes those things happen. More movement actually in 21, 22. So stability is good. So hopefully there isn't that number doesn't get too high. Uh, the, and the dropout rate is slightly above the state average, but about where we were at in 21, 22. So again, what can we do to, to find out where, what's going on with a small percentage of our kids? That, that is also a little bit misleading because that could be someone that moved but didn't enroll anywhere else and that's considered our dropout because they're part of our cohort. And so, another piece to that too, Sam and board, is that if you decide to get your GED, you're also going to fall in that category as a dropout. Yeah, great point. And, and that's already happened a couple times this year where that's probably the smartest route for the students. They can get the GED to James's point, but still a dropout. So right. there's, so, there's, there's more to, to read between the lines with that, that one. Is that the same for students who finish a semester early? 
No. No, they're, they're considered they're, graduate. They're considered graduate. One thing is as we draw, uh, dug into the data in regards to our dropout students, many of our students that decided not to continue school are from Central and, 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 and South America. And the, the, the responsibility and possibly life goal at this moment is not that necessarily education, uh, but it's to earn a job and earn money for their families. So that's a reality here um, as well in at Fenton. Before we go into, go ahead, Reed. Well, you might have gone to the question that I had, because to be, to be fair to the staff, over the period of years, and those state numbers also include the COVID years and so on in Correct. terms of their averages. My question, although it's somewhat, a, for the moment, a somewhat subjective question, you know, what's the quality of the student that you're getting in today versus what you had four or five years ago? In other words, what do you have to work with? I think, well, I think we've seen that, and I'll give Kate a, a chance here because she's very passionate and has, we discussed this um, uh, pre-pandemic uh, and post-pandemic. The pandemic has change education in many different ways. Okay. Um, it has changed learning. Uh, you probably heard of um, some of the uh, social service that needs services, attendance um, uh, as well. So we know our students um, are experiencing learning loss, um, um, uh, sometimes trauma as well. And the students that have moved um, to our district uh, pre-pandemic as well as post-pandemic um, have have larger needs if you want to say uh, uh, to that and needs uh, for their services as well as um, the immigrants coming in um, might have disrupted education um, where they go to school for two years take two years off then go back to school for another two years and so forth so the need of, need of our students have increased this last couple of years Kate you want to add to that yeah, no, I think James said it perfectly. I think, um, you know, dealing with the pandemic for all of our students was really difficult, but two of the indicators that we can see, which, which doesn't always point to it, but we've seen an increase in our low income students and an increase in our EL students, and those students tend to need more resources. Yeah. So I think you hit it, nail, yeah, you know, nail on the head that yeah. even after the pandemic, while we're getting back, we're trying to get back to where we were, our population has changed. You just, yes. That's exactly right. Okay. I would say this is the halfway point of the presentation. This one we brought in uh, data uh, from our feeder schools. Uh, that's Bensonville Blackhawk Middle School as well as Wooddale uh, Middle School. Sam, you want to continue and, and Kate jump in if you want to? Sure. And I'm not going to take the time to go through these same percentages that you already saw. Does that make sense? Because we already talked about those. but. You can see a comparison uh, to Blackhawk, which is BH, and Wooddale, which is WD. And you can see enrollment. You can see percent IEP, percent EL. And I am going to highlight that one because, as we said, you can see 37% in Blackhawk and 30% in Wooddale. So we anticipate being close to 30%, if not already there, quite honestly. And Sam, we could say that as well as low income. That is coming our way as well. Exactly. So uh, attendance right now, of course, attendance is a little bit different in middle school. You would hope there would be a little bit more <laughs> accountability. But, um, you know, so we are below. But uh, that chronic absenteeism is probably higher than the uh, Blackhawk and Wooddale would like to see, as well as their, their chronic truancy. Although Wooddale's pretty low there. The mobility rate's pretty similar. Um, these are different assessments. And uh, if you'd like more information on the eighth grade assessments, you probably want to ask Kate. But you can, you can see there, there is a breakdown. It shows grade eight and then a dash and then all students. Um, so you could see our percentage, but it's, it's uh, the uh, IAR, it's, it's not the SAT. And then math proficiency there also. 
uh, EL exit rate, ours is low, but obviously you could see Blackhawk uh, and Wooddale is also low. So this is perhaps something that we need, uh, and we've already started articulation on to see what, what we can do. Science proficiency. All right, so let's take a pause there. Questions from the Board of Education with regards to our report card? Well, or, or Kate, do you want to say something real quick? It's, no, more, of a, it's so. more of a comment. I mean, all of this is based on the ACT. SAT. 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 Yep. One of them. I don't know. I know it's mandated now. Yes. But I can tell you from talking to former students who had no desire to go to college and did not want to take the test they were forced to take, there was a lot of ABCD, 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 ABCD. And that's going to skew the scores. And I think this is a problem. I know we got to test on something. Mm -hmm. But the kid who's going to go into the trades and could care less about their SAT, ACT, you're going to make me take this test? ABCD, ABCD, ABCD. Have a nice day. I took the test. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we're truly getting a true snapshot. Mm -hmm. And I know we got to test on something, but I don't think it's fair. You have a college that's going to be 50% trades and 50% college versus a, a high school that's going to be 80% college and 20% trades. They're going to take the test a hell of a lot more seriously because it matters to them. The 50% of our students, 60%, 30%, what's the year? That's going to skew our scores every single time. And I know we got to test on something, but I think we need to take all of that with a little bit of a grain of salt because I, I've talked to quite a few former students who had no desire to go to college and it's a waste of three hours. I made designs, I went ABCD, I didn't apply myself at all. And that, 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 that's gonna be reflected in the scores. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, I've heard that from more than one student. Yeah. I'm not going, I don't care, I'm blowing it off. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. We do everything that we can to try to talk to oh, kids about I, why it's important. I get it. The other thing that we're excited about is coming soon, college and career is going to be factored into this, which we know that we are ahead of the curve it, right. on so much of that. So I think, you know, it's it's going to be a smaller percentage, but that's going to help us. Oh, no, absolutely. Um, so you're absolutely right. And then we got to take it with a grain of salt. Yes. I mean, we really do, because if a majority of our students aren't going and it's a waste of time to them, yeah. no matter how much we encourage them, it's like, I just want to get this done and get the hell out of here and move on to the next day. Age, I already got my apprenticeship. I could care less. Good luck. The other thing we have to remember is that over 50% of our students are not native English speakers, and, and they're taking a test that is, and not to say that our students aren't incredibly proficient in English, but that test is, it, there's a lot of things on there that academic language that might be a real challenge well, to I'm, even students, even English speakers, uh, right? So I yep. think mm -hmm. when you look at a school with our population, we really are at a disadvantage in a couple of different ways. So I, I think you're right. And seeing the gains that we're making with the changes in our population, right. that's a real tribute to our students, our teachers, and our community. No, I, I, I'm, I'm not upset with our report yeah, card yeah. at all. I but understand. you look at what these scores are based on, you look at a percent. I, I, yeah, I would have been an ABCD guy because yeah. it didn't matter to me. Yeah. I just want to get out of this class and move on. I've already got my enlistment paper signed. Have a nice day. This means nothing to me. <laughs> so why should I apply myself? <laughs> and I think our scores reflect that. We have a lot of kids going into the trades, going into jobs, mm -hmm. going into the military. They can care less. They just You're making me take this test. The hell with you. Mm -hmm. it's and and just, just to highlight Kate's point, we did a further data dive just administratively. And, and 0% of our existing EL students were proficient in math or ELA. And it's, it's that, obviously, now we're looking at probably 30%. So I appreciate your comments, John, because we don't, we don't look at test scores as a way of how effective the, sc uh, the school is. Um, and I think, and honestly, I just sat in one of the cl an EL class. There's tremendous learning going on in that class. But it's not SAT, no. college career readiness benchmark I mean, type, look, type you, material. So exactly what you're saying, Sam. You look back at the one slide of, of uh, former English learner students, how well we're doing there. I, I think that speaks higher than anything else because once the kids become proficient, their improvement in their drive is tremendous. We're, we're almost in the top 10% there when you look at that slide. I, I think that says a lot too, but that's it, not, 
it's only a small portion of the whole big score. So I, I think we right. got to not get hung up on this. I think we're making the right improvements. And until they find a better way to do this, you will, we're forcing me to take a test that means nothing to me. Yeah. I'm making designs. I'm getting out of this class as fast as I can. Have a nice day. I don't care about your school report card. I'm graduating. Yep. So our improvement or you guys move toward addressing the career advancement and then the also a uh, pathways but also the uh hopefully the coming improvement our cte mm -hmm. would definitely help reaching all students yeah and we're i mean even agreeing with what john said one of the things that i think is good is if you remember back to the beginning of the year our focus was on el strategies for all and our focus was on accountability with attendance so we actually knew this like we knew just being with our students and talking to our teachers we knew that these are problems that we need to continue to make better and to bolster give our staff the um, strategies in order to do this make sure we have the structures in place so you know although some of these scores aren't exactly where we want them to be as an administrative team we looked at this and we were like we're on track we know that next year we are who knows what if the needle will actually move but we're doing we predicted what was happening there so um and that's why it's helpful to look at what blackhawk and what are dealing with that helps us to be able to predict and we're doing a lot of great work of meeting with their teachers with their administrators to make sure that we understand what they're doing so that we can you know build partnerships there um because what they're experiencing is what we're going to experience next year and the year after that and the year after that and you've already implemented some summer programming yep. to help the incoming students mm -hmm. for some of those maybe shortfalls. Yeah. Yes, I don't know if shortfalls is the right word, but there were yes. no surprises right. on this report card for us. Yeah. Yeah. There was also an intent to reach beyond just the incoming student, but also the was it for the middle school also. Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely. So we'll keep pushing ahead um, with that. And um, we also have a special guest here as well, Michelle Papi Nicolau, you know her very well to talk about, which will be part of the report card in the upcoming years, is College and Career Pathways. I have some materials. I joked with Ms. Lamb, our graphic arts teacher, that I would like to become a graphic designer after this year. Ooh, can I have a, <laughs> is this the Cliff Note version? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. So that's why I have it all in a folder for you, so I don't have to talk about everything. Because you know I can talk about this all day. Career guide. I need the career guide. <laughs> okay. Thank you. It's nice to see all of you. Um, Reed, it's nice to meet you. I'm Michelle Papanicolaou. I'm the director of Post-Secondary Pathways. I'm also the division leader for career and technical education. And I am grateful for you um, to have me here tonight to talk about all the wonderful things, college and career readiness that we're doing here at Benton. Um, I I'm grateful to have a team around this work. Um, this year we've assembled alongside of our assistant principal, Eric Caranda, um, our college and career counselor, Rachel Georgiakis, Maya Whalen, one of our school counselors, and Claudia Leclerc. She's our new college and career administrative assistant. Oftentimes Lauren Lem will join us as our internship coordinator, and Sam Benson is always supportive of our work. So. I'm going to take you briefly through each of these five areas, um, and then if you have any questions, um, you can go ahead and ask me. Um, but you know I can talk about this all day, so I'll try and keep it brief. <laughs> um, so the first thing I'm gonna talk to you about today is the PACE framework. This came out of House Bill 3296. It is now in law as of last May that every school district grades six through 12 have to have a framework in place and published on their website by July of 2025. The three major areas of this framework include career, post-secondary education, including college, and financial literacy and aid. When we are finished, I don't know why that this slide kept doing this, but let me take you through, I, I've changed it multiple times. But ultimately what will happen is we will know what a student will do to prepare for college and career every year of their high school education. 
will outline what they need to know and what they need to prepare for. We are working with our feeder schools in this initiative, so we're very grateful that by the end of this, we will have something that's aligned between Wooddale, Bensonville, and Fenton for what our students will do from the time they enter sixth grade to the time they graduate in this area. We're also including the College of DuPage in our efforts so they and some of our alumni so we can get the insight that we need for what students need beyond high school. This is a state example that's on your slide here. And what we will be doing with this is we will be customizing it for Fenton and for our community. You are allowed to adopt the state example, but we figured that it's probably best that we customize it for our own purposes. Yep. All right. It's a little out of order, but that's okay. Um, another thing that we're putting a heavy focus on right now is part of our beliefs that we engage students in authentic life experiences. We are trying to grow our internship and workplace learning experiences for our students. Right now, our students that are involved in internship talk about it to us with a lot of positivity. What they're telling us they love about it, we had a little focus group with them, and they're telling us they love it because it helps them narrow down their college majors and mitigate risk of high cost tuition. They can figure out if what they really think they want to do and what they want to study in college is actually what they want to do and they have an experience to solidify those career goals. In our internship program, they also can build a professional network sooner. So when they do finish college and they want to go into a career choice, they already know some people in that field. Because depending on what their own personal or family networks include, it might not include people in that field. And we all know that to get the jobs that we want, sometimes we need to know people. So we are trying to create those connections for our students sooner. <coughs> students love the higher level of independence that they get. They've lived on a bell schedule for most of their life. They've been told when to walk, where to walk, when to sit, when to stand. This gives them the opportunity during their school day to actually be more independent and manage some of their own responsibilities. And finally, of course, they're getting the employability and leadership skills that will help them in their future. So just a briefing on the internship program. It is a course. It runs two to three periods of their day. Four days they're on site at um, a place of business and one day of instruction here at school where they can earn credentials and they can reflect on their professional skills. Um, they can choose any area they're, they're interested in and they get regular feedback from their mentors on site. About one third of our students who are in internship right now are in paid internships. So they actually are making money while they're learning to be professionals. We also have courses that have embedded workplace learning in them, like our early childhood education class and our intro to education class and our automotive class. We partner with District 2 and District 7 so our students can teach or practice teaching in our elementary school classrooms two to three days a week. And Grand Subaru allows our students four full days on site to shadow and get involved as much as they can in the automotive industry. So we are grateful for both of those partners. Another area where we think students can get some really important um, experience and authentic experiences at the Technology Center of DuPage. They have 18 programs there, anywhere from culinary to automotives to game design. Um, I should have a list of them on here for you, um, and I can get that for you. Um, but there's 18 programs that are geared for students who have a pretty good idea of what they want to do. And they provide the training for students so they have a leg up and they can almost walk out of there into a career or at least one step closer to any certification they might want to get. Um, it's a great program, like I said, for students who really have a great idea of what they want to do and they want to go right into a career. This question. Yes. <laughs> it sounded like it was coming from over there. <laughs> As we are able to make uh, improvements to some of our, uh, I would say, uh, career tr training or CTE <laughs> curriculums and places, but also with the other STEM related one is 
is there a flexibility with curriculum from the page that as we're able to offer, I would say, more challenging courses here that they can adjust also and do and provide another higher right. level yes. class that the, they could take that would progress them along? At TCD or yeah, at, at TCD. So as we are able to provide more, they can also adjust in kind. Yeah, they are working on it. As a member of their board, I, I know that they're actually working on a pretty targeted effort to review their programs, know that they're relevant, rigorous, and going to prepare students for high wage, high demand, high growth jobs. So they are taking a look at their overall programming, just as we are. And what we're trying to do in our programming here at Fenton is ensure that we're not really duplicating what they have. We want to ensure, we do have duplicates. It's just the nature. We've had autos for a long time. We have a great program. They have autos. It's OK. When our students finish our, our coursework here, they can go on to TCD and be part of a very important and, and, and rigorous program. But we want to focus on things like computer science and health sciences and biomed and areas that TCD doesn't necessarily offer for our students. So we're trying to think very carefully as we add any new coursework there or here that we're going to give the students as many opportunities as we can. Does that kind of answer your question? Yes, thank okay. you. Right. So as you can see with the numbers, we've been sending more and more students to TCD every year. They do offer plenty of college credit and plenty of credentialing for our students who are in their programs. So, so we can see a number of our students are earning those. We don't have the data for this year yet from them, but we will be getting that after the school year is finished so we know who actually finished all of those credentialing. Another thing that we've been doing well and I presented to you all about last year is our college and career <coughs> awareness. We have school links in place. It has really helped us. Um, we can now provide students um, awareness of what's happening with college and career visits right on school links. And just so we have an idea about 40 colleges have already visited Fenton to talk with our students this year. And about 142 of our students have attended those. We've also continued our work on career tracks and co career talks. We've had over 20 career talks this year and over five career tracks. Um, we are doing more and more of our career talks in our courses. We know that we have students, a captive audience. They know that that's the area that they want to study or that they're exploring. But we are also bringing in other professionals outside of the coursework because we have those seven career areas. We have certain careers that we focus on, but there's thousands of careers. So some of those that we've taken, we've brought in outside of our courses during Bison time, interpro language services, translation services. We have a lot of multilingual students here that can be an asset to our community in that field. Aviation is another one we're working on. We've had a military fair. Uh, just to name a few, we went over to Romex Terra this year for a, a, a great career trek, and um, our health sciences teachers have brought in numerous guest speakers this year as part of their course. So it's, um, everyone's do, doing a lot of work to that end. Okay, this is another mandate, um, is our Illinois State Board of Education College and Career Pathway Endorsements. It was part of my first slide. But um, ultimately, we have been asked to not only have pathways. I've talked about the seven areas. There's literature in here about the seven areas. And we've organized all of our courses to those careers. But they've now upped it and said, we want students to have the opportunity to have an endorsement on their diploma when they graduate. And with this diploma endorsement, there might be some benefits to it, like scholarships, or um, in some cases, they might have a free ticket to Golden Apple um, Scholars of Illinois. Um, they might have some tuition stipends from community colleges. But ultimately, there's, there's requirements. And our first one is going to be in the area of education. And what has to happen is each student has to, one, have an individualized plan. And this plan has to include career goals, resumes, things of that nature. There needs to be professional learning. So a student to get this endorsement will have to have 
uh, participated in at least two career exploration activities, two team-based challenges. That means they've done a project where mentors from the field has, have helped them or posed a problem to them. And they will need 60 cumulative hours of internship. Third, they will need a career-focused instruction. So they will have to take the courses that go along with the area they're trying to get the endorsement for. Within those courses, two of them, for a total of six credit hours, will have to be dual credit or early college credit. And then finally, they will have to be ready for non-remedial coursework in reading and math. That's what Kate was kind of alluding to earlier. They're going to have to either have a great GPA or at least a 2.8 in CODs, um, definition for some of their um, remedial benchmarks or an SAT score of a certain, uh, uh, a certain amount. So what we've done with the education and training endorsement is we've built all of that into our courses. They don't have to do anything. If they sign up for our courses, it's all part of it. We won't be able to do that in every endorsement area, but in as many as we can, that's what we're trying to do. You sign up for the classes, we're gonna get you everything you need. So this year is our first one that we've launched for the class of 2027 for education and training. Next year we'll be looking to add finance and business services along with computer information technology. And then the following year we'll be ready to launch health sciences and enge engineering and manufacturing. The last topic I'd like to talk about is our early college credit, particularly our dual credit. There are three ways our students can earn college credit while still in high school. One of them is through advanced placement as long as they earn a certain score once they take the exam. Second one is dual credit. That's where our teachers have to get credentialed and they can teach the college course to our students and the students earn the credit. And the last one is dual enrollment where a professor from the college can teach our students, sometimes on site, sometimes here at Fenton. We don't do that here at Fenton. Our students in dual enrollment go on site. Um, right now we have dual enrollment with Elmhurst for Calc 3. But we're, we're trying to grow the dual credit. So last year we had one course and we had about 50 students in those courses and earning about 150 college credits, you can see on the bottom row about how much um, money that they saved um, as a cumulative group. This year we have five classes and we have about 114 students enrolled and if they all pass and do a great job and earn that credit, they will have accumulated over $200,000 in college credit um, tuition. And finally, next year, we're looking to grow it at least by three courses. Um, we already have at least three courses lined up with COD, ready. They've approved, pre-approved our teachers with their credentials. We just have to get it in the books. And we'll hopefully be up to 400 students earning dual credit here at Fenton. Okay, those are my areas. Sorry, I know I went a little longer, James. I always do. I apologize. Any questions? Thank you for your time. Thanks, Michelle. Great job. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next up is our uh, Transition Learning Center. Rich couldn't make it today, so he made a video. I asked him to make this video because this is a very important program. Uh, it is part of our special ed program and for students um, that have graduated uh, from Fenton with significant disability. As, as we all know, um, there's, uh, the law is that we have to educate our students with disability up to 22 years of age if they desire. So let's, let's take it away, Jim. Good evening. My name is Richard Watts, and I'm the Special Education Director from Fenton High School. I'm here tonight to tell you a little bit more about the Transition Learning Center. It's run by our North DuPage Special Education Cooperative to help our students that are transitioning between high school and adulthood. The TLC vision statement is to develop, nurture, and establish students as young adult learners in a collaborative, community-based program that supports and enhances students' independence and promotes adulthood success in the areas of employment, post-secondary education and training, 
independent living, and the community. To meet the needs of our young adults, the Transition Learning Center staff works as a team to provide a continuum of services and programs and training to support young adults learners at all levels of functioning to maximize student success. Our enrollment for TLC, which is a combination of students from Bentham High School and Lake Park, is currently at 20 students. Four of those require direct one-on-one -on -one adult support. In 24-25, this number will grow to 24 students, six of whom will need the direct one-on-one -on -one adult support. In 25-26 and 26-27, we expect 29 students, eight of, the, eight of them will have a need for one-on-one -on -one adult support. And the question now is why, uh, why TLC? Why do we do this? Under federal law, students with special needs who have an IEP or an individualized education program are entitled to receive special education services up until the day before their 22nd birthday. In 2021, Illinois increased this age limit so that students can finish the school year during which they turn 22. Given this legal change, students no longer had to abruptly end services mid-year. This allowed for families and more celebrations as students stayed in school for the entire year to have at the end of the end of the year um, resolution celebration for graduation from the program. Uh, TLC classroom learning. We focus on functional academics as well as functional life skills. And the academics, it's reading, math, social science, and social skills, daily living groups, rec recreation and leisure, focusing on preparation for independent living, topics and materials that are age appropriate but relevant to the needs and development of our students, and we also keep a familiar curriculum. So very similar from the from high school, um, the upper level high school, junior high or junior senior year to TLC, following that, that, that same curriculum. In functional life skills, we work on total communication, including body language and speech, cooking, cleaning tasks, hygiene, independent use of technology, appropriate social skills, and then self-advocacy skills so that students can reach out and ask for what they, what they need and make sure that they, they are successful. TLC has three classrooms that I'll walk you through. Our first classroom is on the left. They share space with our related service uh, uh, officials in the back space, you see behind the, uh, the divider. And then classroom two is on the right side. The third classroom shares, with, um, shares our space with the building entrance and all central building activities. Uh, note the spacing needs here. Keep in mind that many of our students utilize occupational and physical therapy devices like wheelchairs, standers, braces, gait trainers, etc. One of our goals is making sure we have a connection between the community and the classroom. To do this, we have we focus on daily schedule planning, researching community transportation, grocery store cooking preparation, budgeting, communication or self-advocacy skills, counting, making change, researching jobs in the community, practicing job applications, writing resumes, community planning, and then helping students understand their paychecks and what they look like and what they mean. We also work on train and bus transportation opportunities, making sure our students can get from point A to point B, and we actually have field trips and practice to make sure that happens independent grocery shopping, asking for help when needed, making independent purchases, community safety, appropriate social skills, and then employability skills uh, through paid and, unpaid, paid and unpaid employment opportunities. On the left is our multi-purpose room where students work on social and vocational skills. On the right, you see some of our students in our lockers and, our, and that's also where we have our students have lunch. Uh, speaking of lunch, this is our kitchenette where all the student lunches are prepared and also where independent living lessons are taught to our students. This area does not currently have a stove. Um, we have lessons that, you know, that use uh, microwave and other uh, open preparation areas, but currently no lessons regarding stoves. We don't, we don't, have, don't have space or exhaust for one. Uh, proceeding now to the restroom areas. Uh, we currently have one women's bathroom, one men's bathroom with two stalls. 
These are all ADA compliant, but as you can see, the size challenges our students and staff face. Um, and then on the far right is our staff bathroom, which students cannot use because there's an exit door. Um, and for our students, that would be an, an elopement risk. Yeah, there, there would be a concern they might leave the building. Here we have examples of students that are completing the Chamber of Job, uh, Chamber of Commerce job. We have um, a number of students that utilize occupational and physical therapy support items, like a standard, and we have a laundry area, which also uh, we utilize for storage at TLC. Storage for items that the TLC school is using. Students practice cleaning and vocational tasks each day to prepare them for future living and job opportunities. We have some photos here of our, of our students doing that. We have an indoor walking track due to space restraints. You see our students are walking through um, open areas and near classrooms, um, but also getting their exercise. We have recreational time where students can work on social skills. Uh, here's an example of the laundry area again and our computer workspace for students. And uh, cooking activity in the multi-purpose room where they can prepare foods. Um, and then we have art therapies and music therapies, and this is an example of this is this is an example of art therapy in the lunch room. Uh, thank you. Um, have a wonderful evening. Okay, uh, j just really, I ask Rich to take pictures and videos of of the TLC site. Um, our contract for the TLC Center, which is in downtown Bensonville, is up uh, this June. Um, we need to move um, for a couple reasons. Um, as you can see in the pictures, it's overcrowded. Our students are packed there into sardines. The enrollment will increase to 30 to 29 um, with 10 101 um, um, adults to assist our students uh, with severe uh, disability. Um, we also um, had some issues uh, with this site. Um, um, if you have seen the site, if you haven't seen the site and would like to see that with me, you're more than welcome. It's basically an apartment uh, complex and uh, we had issues where plumbing um, and the ceiling uh, has caved in where we had to shut down school, um, electrical uh, and other space issues there. I think the pictures, what I tried to tell, tell uh, Rich is to really show the pictures so the board could see the crampness and, 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 and the lack of space is for students that need more space, that need more services, uh, and the most neediest as well. Um, so uh, as he stated earlier, we share this building with Lake Park High School uh, to cover the costs, both the superintendent and I. Um, agreed that um, we cannot return there next year and um, has directed Todd Putnam, who was here a couple months ago, to start looking for a place for us to relocate. Once again, we just that's just way too small right now. The square footage is 5,600 square feet with um, approximately 30 um, individuals, there, including adults, 20 students, and about 10, 10 adults there. That will grow to approximately 50. Um, we need a space of approximately 10,000 square feet, um, and we are looking for that. We have so far, we have toured four sites. Uh, that includes the uh, superintendents, administrators. We invited parents of, of our students to also take a look at these four sites and uh, NETSEC staff. Um, and there is a promising site uh, here in Bensonville. We would like to stay organic, to stay in town. We don't want to go all the way to Addison or another site. I think our parents and our students deserve to be close uh, to, to their homes. Um, so therefore, we'll continue to look for that and I'll keep you updated. Um, as the numbers grow, as the number uh, square feet uh, increases, as you know, the costs will, will continue uh, um, to, to go up. But once again, I just want to reiterate uh, to give you that visual, um, that is not um, a, an efficient or appropriate place for us as our enrollment um, moves forward. Even if our enrollment stayed, stayed the same, it would still not be the best place. 
any questions there. Some forewarning you that will come up, um, um, and we will have a proposal to move to move to a new site, and we will provide you with that pricing. Great. Um, well, there's. I'm working from memory here. There's sure. There's like 23 or four people there now, mm -hmm. and you know, how there's many of those uh, folks does Fenton have responsibility? In 23-24, uh, we will have 22 Fenton students um, there. Um, we have mo the majority of students there now. Um, right now, there's 20, I believe, 17 are ours. Okay, and then you, you outsource them to this place because they handle their needs, apparently. So, because I'm trying to, if this is an outsourced arrangement, I. But Fenton still gets drawn into helping them find a new place, even though they're an independent uh, organization. These are Fenton students. Um, I'm assuming you pay a tuition or something. Yes, we do. Kind of, it's a NEDSEC program. Yes. Um, yeah. Go ahead. So that um, if they're already paying a tuition, they can't find their own place. You're um, before you carry on John could you I mean Jane could you explain that these are the facilities provided by NETSEC which we pay or correct could, right could you sure yeah, sure so NETSEC is the provider yeah. as you know it's the North DePage uh, special ed co-op um, uh, they provide these services to save us money in, in so many ways. Um, yeah. They have also the staff in the uh, s uh, specialty to to service these students with severe disability. Right, and this is the same functionality. Correct. Right. Uh, so therefore, there is a tuition that they do charge per student. Right. Um, um, which includes the facilities where these students attend. All right, all right. I'm just... I'm not going to ask any work. I just I couldn't figure out why, if they're an independent organization, we're paying tuition, but you're still drawn into helping them find a new place and sure, some other I, stuff. I think Reed, it's as as a home as as um, an advocate for our students. I think it's our job, administrators, especially especially the superintendent, to make sure our students are housed well, are served well, and in a safe and secure place. Um, and. Our parents were also invited, and they had input. No, we don't like this place because I would not put my kids here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I think that was critical that we have uh, not not just NETSEC staff, but parents as well as students and uh, the administrators of the school districts. All right, thanks. So, so I have a question. Yes. So the TLC program is a subset of NETSEC. That's correct. Okay. Oh, okay. I, that's that's. I was a little confused yeah, too. Yeah. So I'm this sure. is a subset of NETSEC. That's Correct. what I was trying. Is that what you were See, trying? This, sure. this is this is where I'm because I'm trying to process this too because I I've heard of NETSEC but this is really the first time I'm hearing. Yeah, yeah. Sure. In my time we discussed the the TLC center. Right. So this no, is where I was a little confused. As actually, well. uh, we talked about before that it was the transition learning center. Right. That's what I mentioned. Well, I, yeah, but I, I, I don't think I put the two together. Oh, okay. Right. Because okay. one being a subset of the other. Right. That, this is where I think I was somewhat confused, too. Because okay. right. I was, I, 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 I don't know, maybe this I missed something. This is all something. NEDSEC in the end, result. This well, is all NEDSEC. There is a continued education for, right. for the state of Illinois that it says that it's got to be graduated after. Yeah. Well, I, I get that that dead set goes to 22, right. and I didn't realize that we transitioned into the TLC. As, I think I lost a piece somewhere mm -hmm. in translation because I always remember discussing NEGSET. I hear TLC brought up, but in my mind, I was thinking of our classrooms, okay, not no. realizing it was an off site facility. Right. So, so the fact that they need to find a new facility that costs, since they're revenue neutral, comes back to all the schools that participate. That's correct. So we are going to see an increase in the cost of. The NEDSEC because of the move to the TLC because we have the increase in the students and the increase of the one-on-one. -on -one. So this really it, isn't our direct cost, it's their direct cost, but their direct cost to us. trickles down to us You're based right. on the number of students we're... Absolutely. Per, okay, now it makes, because I got even, I was a little confused yeah. here, so now it makes more <laughs> sense. Thank you. So that, that's a great clarification. Also, one more pro program, as you know, we do have NEDSEC in the building. It's called Life Skills. See, that's where I think I got confused. Okay. I think I was confusing Life Skills with the TLC. TLC not realizing. So I think this is where I lost something in translation. But, but the connection is 
the life skills program over time yes. typically flows into TLC. TLC. Right, yeah, so I, I get it's it. almost now, like looking at the elementary district sense. enrollments right. and seeing where, where are we going to be. Now it makes more sense because I think that's where I got lost because I'm thinking of our rooms here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't realize we had the off-site facility. I don't know why I didn't put it together, why I didn't yeah. piece it together, but now it makes more sense. So that, that helps a lot. Okay, thank right. you. I heard the confusion and I was trying to lead them to yeah. where he was going. Yeah, all right, no, it, it, I'm with him. Okay. <laughs> Cause I gotta admit, I was a little confused too. And I, I, I think I was thinking our classrooms no, was that, that, but it's not. Now right. it makes more sense. I get it. So this so is the next it's step. part of it. It's, it's all tied together. No, I get it. It's all under the Ned Center umbrella. Feet we can rent to them. Oh, we do not. <laughs> nope. I mean, now that all that's settled the, the out. The STEM wing is for STEM. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Because I, 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 I got to admit, even I was a little confused. Now it makes yeah. more sense to me. I, now the pieces fell into place. Yeah, it's what we said. You go to downtown. You can see it with uh, Joyce used to be. Yeah, we're oh, Joey, okay. Joey C's, yeah. Okay, Joey C's. okay, 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 okay. Right. Yeah. Okay, now it makes more sense. Now, I, okay, thank so, you. Okay. So more to come. Thank you for that. Um, we got a couple more items here. Just, just real quickly, stadium update. All is going well. As you guys know, we had a, a f uh, finance facility uh, meeting uh, earlier at 6 p.m. Um, real quick, stadium is moving along. Um, grass has been removed here. If you could go back one, Jim. Um, basically, the before and after uh, picture there. Um, working on the turf, working on the track, and working on the paving. Next slide. Here is more of a picture of paving. We'll have brand new paving. Um, and we're just grateful that there's a little bit of dryness and sun uh, this, this uh, November and late October, because as you guys know, um, we, we lost at least a month of, uh, of, of work days due to the wet weather. Next slide. This one is the stadium update and piping. Um, um, we're putting more piping to to battle against uh, our, our flooding issues, our water issues, and um, continue to move forward with our water mitigation. Next slide. James, real quick on that, yes. I meant to ask sure. at the uh, previous meeting, have we made the final tie-in to the village now? Yes, we have. Because I know we talked about tying the front end to the system, but I couldn't remember if I heard we tied in and have made that final village connection. So now the whole system, in theory, That's right. should be flowing properly. As a recap, for, uh, a recap um, the front has been tied to the main stormwater. Right, that's and the main storm that water, slide. Yep, and the main stormwater has been tied to the city. So we did make the city tie. That was, yes, I remember a meeting or two meetings ago, we were still waiting to make that tie in. So good, thank you. Next up is the real quick restroom. We are going to wait because uh, we had a bidding for the restroom construction. It's it's cost it cost a little too much, so we will wait until uh, the stem wing project starts in regards to that to save money. Uh, stem wing update. Um, once again, there's five phases for the ar architectural design phases. Phase one is a real super high view of 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 uh, design. Um, big pictures, um, collaboration with our architects as well as our, um, finance, uh, uh, our finance. Phase two is more schematic. Um, that's also a little bit grand pictures, brainstorming with the administrators. Phase three, design and development. That's more of uh, the classroom level where we brought in teachers and staff for their input, and we're very, very close to the next phase, which is the construction documentation phase, uh, which we will work with engineers, mechanicals, and civil, and really get to the nitty gritty. And afterwards is actual construction phase. And here are some renderings of, um, nope, I guess we don't have renderings of uh, the stem wing. Not this slide then. Yeah. Uh, real quick, we received one FOIA from Proven IT. Proven IT is a technology company uh, that rents and sells uh, technology. They wanted more information about our copiers. That has been resolved. That's all I have, Mr. President. Thank you. Our next item is a uh, consent agenda. Um, will any of our board members like to remove any items from the consent agenda and vote on them separately. Yes. P cards. Okay, the board will vote on P card report separately. May I have a motion to approve the consent agenda 
as presented, excluding the P card report. I'll make that motion. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Figueroa? Yes. Rago? Yes. Brzezinski? Yes. Goodrich? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Motion passed. Mr. President, just real quick, we had a very special guest here. We're very, very excited to uh, hire our next CSBO, Mr. Eric Grossi. Eric, why don't you step up here and shake our hands here? Let's give him a hand. We have Ms. Cormley This is Julia Rago, Personal President. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. All right, let's give my another hand here. <laughs> Eric, why don't you take the mic, say a couple words, a little background, your experience, and why you chose Finn. I just wanted to say thank you to everyone for inviting me to the board meeting today. I'm really honored to be here today in front of all of you guys. Um, find the school district, everything that I've read, everything that I've seen about the district has been awesome. There's a lot of exciting things to look forward to in the future. You know, this board meeting today, saw some pictures of some construction, that's always very exciting. Overall, you know, I'm, I'm very excited to become a bison. Um, I'm Eric Grossi, as James said. I'm from Chicago Heights, Illinois, originally. I currently live in the city with my girlfriend, Nicole, over there. And um, I'm, I'm currently working as the business manager at Evergreen Park School District 124, which is an elementary school over there. It's been a good three years over there, but, you know, I'm, I'm really ready to start a new chapter over here. And thank you to everyone, and I, I'm really looking forward to July 1st. Bruce, your days and number. <laughs> I thought the start date was April 1st. <laughs> no, July. He's at least got it out now. Then I can ask you to stay another year. All right. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the P card report as presented? I'll make the motion. Second. Any discussion? You know, why is it there is such anonymity in some of these expenses, such as in travel number one, is order every, ordering everything from science to piano guides, um, you know, to Hispanic heritage event supplies. I mean, it seems to me there should be some ownership of these things. It helps, you know, give a impression that, that well, otherwise this looks like it's puts a bad light on internal controls when somebody can spend this kind of money and um, not having to be personally responsible. Mr. Um, for going forward, it would be, we could continue to try to follow the protocols in place. Whatever questions we as board members may have, we have from Friday to Wednesday, was it Tuesday? Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon? to yeah. provide whatever questions we may have to directly to the superintendent. Yeah. And all of these can be hashed out in detail. It's kind of hard to really address some on the spot like this without some digging. I understand. And that would give them a chance to give a fair response, a reasonable response to whatever inquiries we may have. So it's nothing against the discussion, but some of these, it's not really reasonable or fair to, to on the spot have to go through specific items to address. I would just add it's a high level summary report. Um, we have all the backup here, the controls, the, the sign offs, all that. If we, if we wanted to include that in the board packet, it would basically be a phone book every month. So we can certainly pull that if the board wishes to have all those receipts to back up all those purchases, we can certainly do that. But. That information is held in the business office monthly. Um, it's reviewed by multiple uh, people within the office and outside the office. Um, so that there is checks and balances um, 
for these purchases that are occurring? Everything is documented, and to be fair for the business department, and just to reiterate and, and, and pick it back from what Carrie is saying, um, the board has basically from Friday all the way to, to, to Tuesday afternoon. Please, if there is a specific question or would like to view documentation, and we, we could provide you that information, Reed, um, but once again, to reiterate and put Bruce on the spot um, and say, hey, look, why is this, what is this uh, Latino Heritage Month receipt all about? He, he can't that right away but it doesn't mean we're avoiding the, to answer the question I think it's just um, a matter of, of, of time and um, uh, uh, time to explain into the time for research basically all these purchases are budgeted items and they're approved in our overall budget they, they are yes okay thank you that was my only follow-on um, question to that and I, I assume that's how we were operating but I absolutely just, just for absolutely. verification okay yep. so thank you Appreciate the added detail for the uh, building and stormwater related items. They were a bit, they didn't stand out enough in past reports, but I have noticed that there's more detail in those entries for those construction related items that we have on there. Help us, help us, they didn't stand out for us better, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm good. Roll call. Figueroa? Yes. Rago? Yes. Radzinski? Yes. Goodridge? No. Lewis? Yes. Discussion item acceptance of the 2023 estimated tax limit. May I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Second. Any discussion? Do we need a further discussion for since this was covered during finance? John says no. Any I questions? No. no. I don't have any. Any further? No. Uh, roll call. Figueroa? Yes. Rago? Yes. Rodzinski? Yes. Goodridge? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Motion passed. May I have a motion for the next, for the shared service report? I'll make a motion to accept the shared service report. I'll second. Any discussion? Did I hear earlier that this is something that required to do mm -hmm. it, it's required as part of the AFR um, and it's an annual report a perfunctory process basically that the board acts on uh, you know to uh, demonstrate to the community that we're uh, showing fiscal efficiency with other entities for outsourcing and okay. uh, shared services all right roll call Figueroa yes Rago yes Radzinski? Yes. Goodrich? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Motion passed. Committee reports. Uh, Vincentville Community Foundation? Uh, they had a meeting uh, on the 9th, I believe it was. Uh, neither Kent or I were able to attend. That was James Burke's retirement. I was tied up with that, and Kent had a family commitment. Uh, so I haven't seen the notes on that. So really, we have nothing to report uh, beyond what was reported previously. If that makes sense. Board DEI committee. Uh, we had nothing to report. Uh, we're gonna find on uh, Friday to see where we can find some information and share with you guys. Thank you. Board finance facilities committee. Uh, Mr. President, I think we've beat this up enough in the last couple of meetings. Um, he, he went out of recap. <laughs> I really would rather not. Things are getting done. Things need to be done. And uh, I'm sure we'll have another meeting on this next month. <laughs> Sorry, just being honest. <laughs> Board policy uh -huh. committee. No, nothing. IS, IASB, we've... Um, at the last meeting, I requested your uh, input on the policy item to be voted upon. 
this this weekend at the Triple I conference. If you could give me your responses, that would be great. I, yeah, I talked to James about that earlier. And uh, okay. look we forward to your attendance this weekend at the conference. That would be great. <laughs> the Friday I. morning. <laughs> Right in early Friday morning. Um, when, it, when, when is your delegate meeting? Saturday at noon. Saturday at noon, okay. Uh, you can, you can email get, me. I'll get it to you right tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Lynn? Uh, just, just three uh, Senate bills. Uh, one Senate bill in regards to that's, uh, that might be voted on um, by the Assembly in, in Springfield. It's in regards to halal kosher food. Uh, sponsored by Vilam and uh, Senator Olik. Uh, also a House bill in regards to water safety and another House bill in regards to ISBI language cl cleanup. So more to come on that, but that's what's being uh, legislated in regards to schools. That's it. I was unable to attend, but I believe Mr. James was there. Yes, um, the, we had a meeting last Monday. Uh, we, we spoke about TLC and looking for uh, different locations. And we also um, are anticipating another uh, negotiations um, with one of their uh, uh, union uh, associations. Our next board meeting will be Wednesday, December the 20th, 2023 at 7 p.m with a tentative finance facilities committee meeting scheduled prior to the regular meeting at 6 p.m. Also a reminder, as I stated a second ago, Triple I Conference starts Friday, this Friday. Nice, bright, and early bus, I mean, <laughs> truck van ride, you know, complimentary donuts and coffee if you show up early for the drive. <laughs> May I have a motion and a second to go into closed session for the following. Five Illinois CS 120-2C1. The appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of Fenton School District 100. Five Illinois CS 120-2C2 collective negotiating matters between the public body and its employees or their representatives or deliberations concerning salary schedules for one or more classes of employees. Roll call. I'll make the motion. Second. Figueroa? Yes. Rago? Yep. Yes. Radzinski? Yes. Goodridge? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Mr. President, I, I would like to recommend if we could just go to close.
make a, make a motion for us to Session. <laughs> May I have a motion and a second to adjourn? So moved. Second? <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, so I'll motion that. There right. we go. Right. Give it to Reed. Thank you. Right. <laughs> Give it to Reed. <laughs> Kent's not here. Let Reed have a motion. All right. Thank you. Good night. Aye, 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 aye. Aye, 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 aye. 7 a.m. Friday. Um, okay. Yay. Karen. <laughs> Folks, if you're bringing your car, parking lot, one, two, three, 